news now. The Super Eagles of Nigeria will open camp tomorrow in Uyo, Akwaibum State, for Saturday's 2017 Africa Cup of Nations qualifying match against Tanzania. Goalkeepers Emmanuel Daniel, Ikechuku Ezenwa, and defender Jamu Alimi are being expected in Uyo. A number of foreign-based professionals, including defender William Trost Ekong and forward Odion Egalo, are also being expected. Team captain Mikel John Obi, who also led the national under-23 to win bronze at the Olympic in Brazil, is scheduled to arrive at the team's base on Tuesday. The Super Eagles and their new technical advisor, General Raw, will use the match to prepare for the 2018 FIFA World Cup qualifying series clash with Zambia in Ndola on October 8th. Now, shooting stars of Ibadan this evening beat Kano Pillars 4-0 in the Nigeria Professional League to gain their pound of flesh against the former champions after they lost the reverse fixture 6-0 in Kano. Lagos-based side Ikorodu United, who have been banished to Abekuta for their home games, forced El Kanemi Warriors to a one all draw. The title race took a new dimension as leaders Wiki Tourist and Enugu Rangers both lost 1-0 to FC Ifanyuba and Nasara United. Rivers United moved into second place on the table after a 2-0 home win over Plata United, while Ifanyuba are now third with 52 points. The relegation battle between MFM FC and Abia Warriors was delayed by a day following heavy rain in Lagos, which made the pitch at the Agege Stadium unplayable. But the Nigeria Table Tennis Federation will this week unveil the team that will represent the country at the 2016 IWTF World Junior Championship in South Africa after days of rigorous training at the team's camp. The 18 players in camp are set to fight for shirts in a 10-man team that will fly the country's flag at the global tournament. The team coordinator and Africa's most decorated table tennis player, Shagun Toriola, who is impressed with the performance of the players in camp, says there will be trials to pick the best players. In other news, Manchester City has continued their 100% start to the season with a 3-1 victory over West Ham that took them to the top of the English Premier League. City took the lead when Raheem Sterling finished off a superb team move and Fernandinho headed in a second from Kevin the bronze free kick. Mikhail Antonio pulled one back for West Ham in the second half. Sterling added his second late on when he stroked him from a tight angle. Earlier, West Bromwich Albion and Middlesbrough played a goalless draw. A Mercedes driver, Nico Rosberg, has rekindled his world championship ambitions with victory in a chaotic crash hit Belgian Grand Prix. As world champion, Lewis Hamilton staged an astonishing fight back to finish third. Rosberg's delight was reduced by his Mercedes teammate Hamilton's damage limiting and thrilling drive to finish behind Daniel Ricciardo, second in a Red Bull car, after starting from the back row of the grid. Hamilton, who started 21st after being handed 60 grid position penalties for taking three new power units through the weekend, remains ahead of Rosberg in the title race with 232 points to 223. been great of course to get uh, to get the win today on this special track you know it's a legendary track but Lewis starting from the back of course uh, made it a lot easier this weekend and I'm sure he's gonna be back uh, in Monza and it's gonna be uh, a big battle as always <laughs> Cool. You know, obviously it was pretty pretty messed up at the start. There was a lot of virtual safety cars and then the red flag, but um, we knew we had a bit of damage actually from the first corner, but we fixed the front wing and then uh, got back out. And I mean, it was a bit of a race by myself, but obviously I enjoyed uh, the pace and obviously to keep Lewis behind was a good achievement today. The team did an amazing job this weekend. To, I changed three engines, so I'm actually ahead of these guys now on <laughs> engines, which is a good thing, thanks to the team. And uh, just a remarkable day. What a beautiful weather, great crowd and great race. 
We're teeing off to golf now. Belgian Thomas Pieters has won his third European Tour title after he birdied the last three holes to take the Made in Denmark title by a stroke. The victory sent a strong message to European Ryder Cup captain Darren Clark after Pieters recorded his third consecutive top five finish to show him he's still in form. Bad weather delayed the final round by more than four hours, but Pieters kept his concentration to defeat Britain. Bradley Dredge by one shot for a 17 under par total. In women's tennis, top seed Agnieszka Radwanska has beaten Elena Svitolina to win the Connecticut Open, the final tune-up before the start of the U.S. Open. Radwanska ranked fourth in the world entering the tournament, cruised through the first set, then overcame 10th seeded Svitolina in a second set tiebreaker to win 6-1-7-6 to claim her 19th career WTA singles title. In the recently released draw for the final major of the year that begins play tomorrow, Robanska is seeded fourth, while Ukrainian-born Svitolina is the 22nd seed. In other news, at least 25 people have been killed as Turkey continues to target Kurdish-held areas in Syria near the border city of Jarablus. The Turkish military says those killed in today's airstrikes were Kurdish militants. Separately, a monitoring group says at least 35 civilians and four militants were killed by a wave of Turkish strikes in the same area. On day five of Turkey's military operation against so-called Islamic State militants and Kurdish militia, Turkish warplanes and heavy artillery roared into northern Syria, striking target areas reportedly held by the Kurdish militia and killing at least 25 people. Turkish military says that those killed in the airstrikes are Kurdish militants, but according to forces aligned with the Kurdish group, the Kurdish militia had not been in targeted areas, having withdrawn from the area before the assault. Turkey, which has been battling Kurdish insurgents on its own soil, sent soldiers, tanks and other military hardware into Syria on Wednesday in support of Syrian rebel allies. They seized the Syrian frontier town of Jarablus from Islamic State militants. Witnesses in Karkamis, a town on the Turkish side of the border near Jarablus, said they heard jets overhead followed by blasts nearby. Explosions of artillery shells were also heard in the area, but it was not immediately clear who was firing or what the targets were. Turkish tanks and troops backed by Syrian rebels have captured territory from ISIS and clashed with the Kurdish People's Protection Units, a Kurdish militia supported by the United States, which is itself fighting ISIS. Meanwhile, eight Islamic militants linked to ISIS have been freed from jail in the Philippines in what has been described as a staged raid. Now, police officials say at least 20 fighters from the Malte group turned up at the Lanao de Su jail in the southern city of Marawi, but no shots were fired. The militants were held last week after being caught with homemade mortars. At least 15 other inmates who faced murder and drug charges also walked free, but it is not clear whether this was agreed. The Malte group has carried out several bombings and kidnappings in the southern Mindano region. Initial reports suggest the militants kidnapped the two workers and made them wear orange shirts similar to those worn by ISIS while beheading victims before they were killed. And the main news again, President Muhammadu Buhari today said his administration is willing to swap Boko Haram detainees for the missing Chibok girls, provided certain conditions are met. The president was speaking in Nairobi, Kenya, where he took part in the Tokyo International Conference on African Development. An international rock star, Bono, is visiting Nigeria for the second time in as many years to promote his advocacy group One campaign which aims to pressure governments into improving transparency and accountability. 
And that's it on News at 10 tonight. Many thanks for staying with us. I'm Harriet Albini. Have a good night and a great night. This is Channel's Television, celebrating 21 years of professional broadcasting.